This is video you were never supposed to see. Video of Massachusetts District Court Judge Patricia Curtin allegedly stealing a $4,000 Cartier watch while passing through security at Logan Airport. Judge Curtin removes the watch from the bin and holds it up to a TSA employee with her back to the judge. Then she returns the watch to the bin and starts to walk away, but then comes back and takes the watch. Judge Curtin certainly didn't want to talk about it. Hi, excuse me, Judge Curtin. I'm Mike Bodat with Box 25. We wanted to talk to you about the Logan incident. And the state has been tight-lipped too, repeatedly denying Fox Undercover's public records request to see police reports detailing what happened on that day back in February. Something seems fishy here. It certainly, you know, if you're looking at it from the outside, it certainly does. Former Boston uh, Police Superintendent and Chief so Daniel Linsky says transparency is key when dealing with cases involving public officials. It's critical to be transparent both for their benefit and the department's benefit to make sure that um, we're dotting I's and crossing T's, especially when somebody has uh, some influence or, or uh, power, uh, just to make sure that it's all about board. But a lack of transparency has surrounded Judge Curtin's case. The only clue something actually did occur, this state police log from the airport, indicating Patricia Curtin would be summoned to court and charged with larceny. But Judge Curtin was never charged with anything. The clerk magistrate here at East Boston District Court decided against just charging the judge with the felony and held a hearing instead. A hearing at which the clerk magistrate himself looked at the evidence, including the video of the judge taking the watch, and decided it did not support a criminal charge. Because the judge wasn't charged, the state police refused to release their report, saying they're not public records. And so the details of this case have remained a secret for more than six months. But Suffolk County District Attorney Dan Conley agreed to release the reports and video last week after we asked if Judge Curtin received special treatment because she's a judge. A spokesman was adamant that the DA wanted Judge Curtin charged with larceny. The incident starts with a report of a stolen $4,000 watch. A half hour later, the judge is located in the American Airlines VIP Admirals Club, reading a newspaper where she admits taking the watch and hands it over. When asked for ID, she gives two, her driver's license and her district court ID card, identifying her as a judge. Judge Curtin tells a trooper, I saw the watch in the bin and attempted to notify the TSA, but they were too busy. I was trying to get my bags, and with all the confusion, I placed the watch in my bag. It was an honest mistake. Another trooper asks, with all the law enforcement personnel at the airport, why she would not give the watch to any of them. She replies that she tried, but everything was so busy and moving so fast. Back to the video, which shows the judge removing the watch from the bin and holding it up to a TSA employee who isn't looking at her. She puts it back in the bin, starts to walk away, but comes back to get the watch, ignoring another TSA employee who's right next to her. According to a trooper who watched this, based on the video, I formed the opinion that the judge had substantial opportunity to return the watch to the TSA and failed to do so. Can you tell us why you took the watch? Ma'am, if you were trying to return it, why'd you walk away with it? Can you just answer a few questions? We're just trying to understand your side of the story, ma'am. There's enough based on what I've seen that charges could have issued based on probable cause. We showed the police reports to retired Superior Court Judge Isaac Borenstein. If the district attorney and the state police that investigated this wanted it to go forward, one has to ask oneself, well, why, why was that decision made not to? Why were, were their requests rejected? Joseph Ferretra is the clerk magistrate who let Judge Curtin off the hook after a closed door hearing in East Boston District Court. He watched that video at the hearing. I saw him pick up a watch and try to, and try to return it, and then later it got returned. But she walked off with the watch, didn't she? She walked away, yes. So that seems suspicious, doesn't it? Her intent was to return it to a TSA person, to a state police officer, or someone. That was her intent, and it ended up that way. Is she getting special treatment because of who she is? Absolutely not. But things broke in Judge Curtin's favor again. She had been placed on leave, but after her hearing, she returned to the job, doing only administrative work until retiring August 4th. Working that desk job for nearly four months kept her on the payroll long enough to collect a raise, which in turn boosted her pension by $10,000 a year for life. Judge Borenstein doesn't know if Judge Curtin retired because of the Logan incident, 
but says the lack of information from the state about Judge Curtin's brush with the law is troubling. Is this person being treated the same way anybody else would have been treated? That's where people's minds go when you keep them from getting information. And we're not getting a lot of information from the trial court about why Judge Curtin never returned to the bench after the Logan incident. The court only saying her reassignment to administrative duties was a personnel matter. As for the criminal case against Judge Curtin, a court spokesperson noted that neither the DA nor the state police appealed the clerk's decision to not charge the judge with a crime, which raises another interesting question. Judge Curtin's attorney, David Eisenstadt, just happens to be friends with Suffolk County DA Dan Conley and also a major donor to him. We asked if that connection had anything to do with why prosecutors didn't appeal the case. The DA's office says no, that the case wasn't appealed because the burden of proof would be even higher before a jury, and they had already presented all their evidence to the clerk magistrate. The DA spokesman also says that the DA and attorney Eisenstadt never discussed this case and again pointed out that the DA's office wanted Judge Curtin charged with larceny. We also followed up with attorney Eisenstadt, but he did not return several phone calls. This story started with a tip. Do you have inside information about something that needs to be exposed? We want to hear it. Call us at 1-800-TV-FOX25.